Yo, yo, Spectre here. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a Y2K Atomic logo in Blender. First things first, open up Blender, then remove everything from the screen. Then do Shift A and then go over to text. And then do tab and then rename this to whatever you want to rename it to. I'm going to choose the word spiffy. Then hit tab again. Then over here on rotation X, make sure to do 90 degrees get a little closer and then go over to object data properties and make sure to bring down the geometry and the font tab and then over here on the font make sure to click on the folder icon and then choose the font accelerate I'm gonna leave the link in the description below and when you click it make sure to click it again and that way you see this text down on the bottom and then hit open and then over here where it says geometry on extrude do a 0.3 and we're going to make two more copies of this. Uh, but before we do that, make sure to right click and then go over here to where it says set origin to and then origin to center of mass. And then now we can make a duplicate. So do control C and control V. And then one more time, control C, control V. And now let's rename the text over here. I'll do spiffy one and then spiffy two and then spiffy three. And now spiffy one is good to go. So now let's do spiffy two. And then over here on the extrude, do a 0.25. And then on the depth over here on bevel, do a 0.04. And then now let's go on spiffy 3. And the extrude is 0.17. And then over here on the depth, it's a 0.1. And it should look something like this. And it's okay if you see this uh, blemish here in the bottom. Some of the lines are a little bit messed up. But honestly, when you input the materials, you'll be it's going to be hard to tell. Now select Spiffy 3 and then shift select on Spiffy 1 and then do control P and then where it says set parent 2 and then hit object and then do the same for Spiffy 2. Then shift select Spiffy 1, control P and object. Now if you move the Spiffy 1 over here on your object properties, it should all be moving together as one select your logo and then right click and then one more time set origin to origin to center of mass and volume now let's move this over to zero and then the same over here now it should be in the middle here then do shift a and then where it says curve on circle click on it expand it out by scaling big and then go over here to your object data properties then bevel it over here and then do 0 0.015 then hit enter and then now we're going to make it a little smaller and let's rename this to ring one now let's do a duplicate do control c control v and then scale it a little bit bigger and let's rename this ring two and now let's make a copy of the bigger one do control c control v and then make it a little bit bigger and rename it to ring three now let's select all of them and then hit G and Z and then make it into the middle. Now let's hit ring one and then go over to object properties. Then over on the rotation on the Y axis, do minus 30. Now choose ring two. And here on the same rotation on the Y axis, do positive 30. And here on the third wing, just leave it as is. Okay. Now we're going to make some of the UV spheres. So do shift A, go over to mesh and then where it says UV sphere, click on it and then now right click and then do shade smooth and then hit S and scale it down and then do G Y and get it closer to you. And we're going to scale it down a little bit smaller and we're going to make five other copies. And on this one, do alt D and then just place them next around. And the reason why we did Alt D on this one is because whenever we do change the materials, uh, we're going to want to make it all the same. Before we start aligning the UV spheres with the rings, click on the ring first and then go over to your object data properties, go down and then where it says resolution, max it up all the way and do the same on all the other two. Okay. Now let's go to object properties. And now let's match these two together. 
And then now that they're aligned, select the UV sphere with the ring and then do a shift and click on the ring and then right click and then over where it says parent, go to follow path. Now if you hit space, you're going to see the UV sphere follow the path of the ring and then now um, go over to object properties and then go down where, to where it says path animation and then where it says frames, switch this over to 300 and now let's do the same for all of the other UV spheres. So on this one, we're going to place it on the opposite end of the first ring. And do the same. Shift click on the ring and then parent follow path. And now make sure that the other ones are going to be placed on the sides. So let me show you. And you can use the guide here on the red axis over here to kind of guide yourself. Now that you got your UV spheres acting like the electrons, um, hit space. And you can see the animation now in full effect. Now over here in the timeline, we're going to switch this over to 500. Now let's go over to our shading tab, click on the fill and then make a new material. And we're going to color it in pink. Now, if you go over to metallic, make sure to leave it at zero and the roughness, let's do a 0.2 and let's rename the material to pink. And then now let's click on the outer outline and that should be pink as well. And then we're going to make the outline black. So let's click on it and then hit new. And here on base color, just bring it down, make the metallic one and on the roughness, bring it down and now let's rename it and let's go back to the fill. And if you click on base color, just bring it up. And that should also do the same on the other ones. Now let's click over here on the ring and then select black and then do the same for the other two. Now here on the electrons, let's make a new material for this. So click new and let's rename this reflective pink. Now we can also just go over here on the first one and then on the hex, copy the hex color and then go over to the electron and then go over to base color and then paste it in. But over here on the metallic, leave it at zero. And then over here on roughness, bring it down. Now it's a little different compared to the other one. And as you saw, just by changing the color on one of them, it actually applied to all of them. Now let's select object and let's go to world. And then do shift A and then search for environment texture. Select color to color. And then over here where it says open, click open. And go over to your local disk or wherever you have Blender downloaded and go over to program files. And then over here it should say Blender Foundation. Then on your latest version of Blender, minus 3.5, click on it again. And then data files. And then if you go over here to studio lights and then mat cap and then click on this one that says check normal and then it says EXR and Y as well. Hit open image. Now if you go over to your render shading, it should look something like this. Now if you go over here to where it says color space, where it says linear, hit filmic log. And then now let's go over here to your render properties and then switch over to render engine cycles. And over here where it says device, switch it over to GPU compute. If you have a GPU, if not, leave it at CPU. And then over here where it says max samples, let's do 300. 
and then down here where it says max samples as well 300 now let's go back to layout and then do shift a and we're going to add an area light so go down to where it says light and then area and then scale this up and then do g and z bring it up and then hover it above the logo now go over here to your object data properties and then switch the power over to 250 watts and then do alt and D to make a duplicate and then just move it in front of the logo you can do GY and then rotate it and then do alt D again and face it the opposite direction now if you go over to rendered mode now go back to your output properties and then change the frame rate over to 60 and then on your output make sure to save your file somewhere where you know it's going to be perfectly stored I'll make a new folder I'll put spiffy and then tut for a tutorial accept and then accept again and then the color depth I'll switch it over to 16 and then I'll leave it as PNG because I want to make edits to them later on and also to use as, as a thumbnail then go over here to your render properties and then go down and then where it says film and then click transparent that way you can only see the logo itself and not the EXR or HDRI now let's set up a camera do shift A and then camera and then on your object properties make sure to hit on the rotation X 90 degrees and then zero on the other ones and then hit G and Y and pull it back and then go over here to your upper properties and then switch the resolution to 1080 by 1920 and the reason why we're doing this resolution as a vertical 1080p is because the electrons are going to be moving and we want to capture that as well as the fisheye lens has its effect. Now go over to object data properties and make sure you're still selected on the camera and then right click and then set active camera and then go over here to where it says type and then switches over to panoramic and make sure that the panoramic type is fisheye equisolid and then on the lens enter 15 make sure to enter it twice if that happens and then now go over to your object properties and get closer and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the very left side of the logo and we're gonna be somewhat close like this and then now you can see the electrons above our viewpoint and that's what I was referring to in order to capture that now let's get closer and we're going to add a keyframe here as well as set a keyframe on the Y location and then now let's go over here on 100 frames on our timeline and we're going to pan over on the X location and all the way to the right side and I think here is good insert a keyframe now let's go to 200 and on the X location enter 0 and then enter the keyframe and here on the Y you can enter minus 1.5 and then now let's go to 500 frames and let's go backwards and let's do minus 7.5 and then enter a keyframe there now if you hit play you can see that the animation is going in full effect now it is time to animate the rings so make sure to select on ring number three and then make sure you're all the way at the zero on the timeline and here on your object properties 
on your rotation Y, click on the keyframe here, and then go to the last frame, and then input 670, and then enter the keyframe. Now go back over to zero, select ring number two, and then insert the keyframe, go to the last one, insert 775, and then hit the keyframe. Now go back, and then click on ring number one, select the keyframe, and then go to the last frame, and then insert minus 720, and then hit the keyframe. Now if we go over here on this shader, if you hit play, you can kind of see what's happening. And then when you're ready, go back to your render shader and then right click and then select active camera. And you can kind of play the animation and you can see if it's everything is right. Now everything seems perfect to me. So now it is time to render. And all you gotta do is do control and then F12 and you should start seeing a render. And there you have it guys. That is how to create an, an atomic Y2K logo in Blender. And if this has helped you in any way, shape or form, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Also, I wanna give a huge shout out to my new subscribers. You guys are really enjoying the Y2K tutorials. And if you haven't already done so, I do have more of other types of Y2K tutorials on Blender. I'll leave all the, of the links in the description below. And also please make sure to follow me on my social medias. It is at Spectre3D. And as always, thanks for watching.